Hi, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and in this video I'll be looking at this wireless 2K video doorbell and chime from Arenti. This is the V-Bell One. It's an ultra HD 3 megapixel 2K wire-free battery powered video doorbell. Comes from Arenti who create some really nice looking products. They've won lots of design awards, including the Red Dot Design Award, which normally gets given out to products that are very nice looking as well as functional. It comes in this nice case, very similar to some of the HomeKit and um, smart devices that you normally get like Nest and things like that. Apparently it offers easy mounting. It uses their own app to watch its surveillance back and get notifications and things like that. It only supports 2.4G, because obviously 5G is a little bit limited in terms of how it stretches across the home. So 2.4G is a wider band. It has more reach with less interference. So you can probably talk to the chime as well as talk to your router that might be buried deep inside the house. All right, let's have a look at what's inside the box. Okay, so here's everything you get inside the box. You get a sticker to alert your neighbors and everything that your property is being recorded. You have a quick start guide with just a few pages on how to get everything up and running. You get the camera itself. Here's the chime that you connect with a USB adapter and the attached cable, which is micro USB to USB A. You have two 3M stickers or sticking pads. I'm not quite sure what they're for yet, but we'll come to that in a minute. You have a screwdriver to detach the rear backing plate of the camera itself. And we've got some mounting screws to attach the camera mounting plate onto any particular surface or wall. You get a pair of three AAA batteries to power the Chime unit, or you can opt to charge it through USB-C as well. There's a connector on the bottom here to power the Chime instead. Unfortunately, this isn't a plug-in Chime. You can't just plug it into the wall. You have to use the either the bundled power adapter or the batteries itself. But at least with the batteries, you can um, position it anywhere around the home that's uh, near to you, so you can actually hear it, as well as take it in the garden, for example, um, if you're not gonna hear the Chime indoors and it comes with one chime i'm not sure if you can actually have additional chimes so just looking at the manual then it's only got a few simple pages to let you know where everything is and what actually comes inside the box you've got a very short instruction on how to get up and running you can download the app and then it will take you through the steps of installation and just generally pairing the camera to the chime as well as the camera to the internet and to capture it has 10 months of standby time working time is around three months if it has 10 times waking up each day PR range is seven meters maximum with a PR angle detection of 100 degrees. It supports up to 128 gig. It's got two-way audio so you can talk to the people through the camera feed on in the app. It's got a maximum resolution of 2304 by 1296. Infrared is five meters and it's got a three megapixel sensor. Being a security camera and doorbell, it's quite a chunky thing. It's almost like a bigger than a Snickers bar, way bigger. Uh, let's just go for dimensions. It's around 14 centimeters long or five and a half inches, five and a half centimeters wide or just over two inches. And it sticks out from the wall around three centimeters or just over one inch. Let's remove this protective film. We've got a film as well that goes over the sensors. So you've got the camera up top, you've got the PI sensors and infrared down below. You've got the main business end of the doorbell here. The backing plate comes already pre-installed. So we're gonna use the screwdriver that they give to us to unscrew it. And down below, we've got a weather sealed sort of grommet here. And underneath we've got a reset switch on and off. We've got a five volt micro USB port here. And you've got an SD card slot here for internal storage. So you don't have to worry about any cloud services or any subscription models to worry about with this camera. And looking over at the chime, it's roughly seven and a half centimeters square and it sticks out around about three centimeters deep. You've got some buttons here to probably go through the functions of different ringtones, the volume, and you've got a config button here, which you probably have to use to do pairing to the chime itself. On the back, we've got a battery compartment here. Like I said earlier, you can either use batteries or you can actually use the micro USB port here to constantly give power to the chime instead without having to worry about batteries. So let's get this thing paired up. So you can either, if you've got a delicate surface, these 3M stickers are used to be placed on the top here and at the bottom here and you can use that to attach the doorbell onto a surface if you're a bit precious on the wall surface that it's sticking onto. You can also got two screw holes here to do a more permanent mount for the mount. So the plate can just slides off at the bottom here with the camera pointing upwards so you come down. So we're gonna take a shot of the QR code so we can actually download the app. So the one in the manual doesn't actually take us to the app. We need to go 
from the one on the box. So we want Apple. Here we go. So here's the here's the app. So I don't have an account, so we've got to sign up. Okay, so we signed up on the app. Now we've got to press the on button on the bottom side of the camera. That's now on. It now sort of lights up a bit. We've got some red lights inside. We've got a red light up on the doorbell indicator here. We've got to add devices. We've seen that we want a doorbell and here's our doorbell here. Yep, so we powered it on. Press the ring button. All right, so we're gonna select Wi-Fi. So similar to the vacuum that we tried, we're gonna show a QR code to the camera. So we heard a notification. So it's now connecting to our network and the device is found. So we're gonna probably give it a proper name, VBell, and then we're done. Let's go for an update. Let's do a quick upgrade so we can actually run the latest version. A few moments later. So I found a um, 16 gig micro SD here. It's not the fastest, it's um, quite an old one. So we're gonna use that in the camera to store our video footage locally. Copper side that way towards the back and that should then click into place. There we go, that's now inserted. So that's now updated the camera. It's very similar software user interface as some of the other smart security camera content that we've got. And here's the video feed. This is me. And um, quality seems all right. Seems to struggle in really bright light, but that's probably understandable. We'll see how that works on the outside world. It's using SD at the moment, so you can toggle that to UHD. That might depend on your router and your Wi-Fi connection. I've got quite a weak one in my office, so um, we've got a signal strength. Battery level seems to be about half, so it might need a bit of charging before we go all in with the fully commit. Got motion detection here. That's now going to detect motion and probably start recording. Here we go, so now we've got uh, not a very friendly notification if i'm honest but um that seems to work we've got a history recording so we can actually scrub all the way back but i don't think that's not a live feed unfortunately so we've got sd card in cloud uh we've got no cloud package at the moment we've got three month free so let's maybe do that i don't know if we're gonna have to give any credit card details out no we don't so that's now fully active and we've got some settings here so we've got a device name device share device information uh, 60 82 percent signal strength to the wi-fi so i don't know why we couldn't get a super hd at that point so here you can do an easy setup so you can actually then position the camera to how where you want it so you can actually get a good feed as to whereabouts it, it is and the type of signal you're going to get to the wi-fi so that's quite handy saying that whether you can or cannot install the camera based on its signal probably and maybe the light conditions basic function speaker volume uh, you can have a voice message so when they ring the bell it could maybe give out a voice message whether you want to toggle the 24 or 12 hour clock night vision mode um, is basically whether it will switch between color and black and white maybe you've got an outdoor lamp you might want to keep the view in color and not go into the black and white infrared mode i'm going to set that to automatic for now power management we're on 26 percent so quite low out of the box we need to charge that up wireless charge chime reminder probably the battery level power saving shoot time between 10 and 30 seconds normally 10 is about sufficient receive notifications whether you want to change sensitivity of motion detection day and night accuracy of human detection and whether you want to set up a schedule of when you want to be reminded you can also do a tamper alarm if someone's like going to try and rip the thing off your wall uh, it should give you an alert that someone's about to do that so maybe it's got um gyro detection in there potentially or if it's of blocking the cameras perhaps got event recording and how, when it's going to store the capacity of the card that's in it currently and how much is remaining and then how much do you want to format it we're going to format that now actually so the card is now done and formatted cloud storage we'll go back to that once we've actually got some recording here you can set it up to amazon alexa and google home so you can actually show it on a google hub feed or or actually in the app if you want to actually record and display the content of the captures in that device instead there's no home kit support from what i can tell and delete the device so that's basically settings to get these batteries inserted on the back then we need to pair the chime to the ringer so we need to power it up so then we press the doorbell button to pair So that seems to work okay and then we can go through the different pairing melodies so let's have a go at that we can change the volume 
So about three different levels of volume there. It vibrates a lot. Uh, let's go for the melodies. So not many. Got two classic ones and two sort of musical chime ones. So not that many, which is a little unfortunate. I'd like to have seen a little, little more if I'm honest. And that's basically the uh, Arenti 2K wireless video doorbell at the moment. I'm gonna have this plugged in and operating for at least a week, uh, then I can return with my overall impressions. So I'll see you then. One week later. Okay, so I am back after using the Arenti V-Bell 1 for a full week. I decided to use the two small adhesive pads to stick the video doorbell to the front of my house. The adhesive pad stuck well to the PVC cladding that I had on the outside and it stayed put throughout the whole week. I found the setup to be pretty simple thanks to the install guide on the app that allowed me to monitor its Wi-Fi connection to my router and alert me of any stability and strength of its signal and to relocate its position if it wasn't good enough. Oddly, at just under six meters away from my main Asus Wi-Fi 6 router though, it kept swapping between normal and poor signal. But once placed on the outside, it did get roughly around 70% signal strength, which was just enough to have a decent level of operation outside the house. I placed the battery powered doorbell around six meters away from the front door and around where the V-Bell 1 was being installed. And the doorbell managed to communicate with the chime without any problem. The selected chime and at its loudest setting was loud enough to be heard from anywhere in the house. And I like that being battery powered, it can be moved around the house to allow it to be heard, whilst in the garden, for example. Apart from the ringing doorbell, the most time I had with the V-Bell 1 was through its app. Just like most other Wi-Fi based cameras and doorbells, I found the notifications to be just behind the period where you would catch the person whilst at the door. However, even if I did catch them, I'm not the one that would converse with couriers and strangers over the two-way video and microphone of the doorbell anyway. App alerts when someone presses the doorbell acts like a call is coming in on your phone. And on pressing the green accept button, the app displays the live video feed along with a quick access to the intercom function to allow it to instantly communicate with the person facing the camera. You can also reject the alert and just let the camera and onboard storage do their thing in capturing the event for a period between 10 and 30 seconds at a time. The app itself is pretty lightweight. The home screen showcases the connected devices and from here you can tap to view its live feed or quickly view previous recordings. In the live view, you can take a live photo, start a recording, and communicate using the intercom button. Signal and battery life and display quality is also presented here and can be toggled between the two. I found the 130 degree field of view to be just a little too narrow for my front driveway. However, it's 2K resolution quality in the day as well as in night was decent with natural color and with very little distortion. The audio capture wasn't the best I've heard and it mirrors the more lower end quality of security cameras that I've experienced in the past. But through the two-way audio, you can understand each other, which is very important. My home isn't big enough to make the use of Alexa or Google Assistant with this device. However, both are supported through their own apps with the V-Bell 1 video feed being cast to their respective display devices. Arenti offers three months of free cloud storage before its fairly reasonable and optional paid subscription service begins with a basic level of save recordings being kept for 72 hours during its free plan. After the trial has ended, you can continue the same plan with an annual fee of around $30, whilst 30 day save recordings will set you back $160 for the whole year, which I thought was pretty reasonable. Alternatively, you can insert an SD card of up to 256 gig and store all the content locally on the device. I inserted a 16 gig SD card at the beginning of the week. I still had 15.6 gigabytes remaining on the card with 10 second recording and motion detection on at its default medium setting. So I think 16 gig will be more than enough for just over a month's worth of recording. Battery life after a week dropped to 68%. However, general battery life will vary depending on whether you monitor its live feed often and browse through its historic recordings regularly. At a 4.5% drop per day, that's less than a month before it requires recharging. And should you get a similar type of performance, because the battery is internal, you can't swap out the batteries on this video doorbell, meaning your camera and doorbell 
are out of action whilst it charges using the bundled wall adapter. So charging the device overnight would be my recommendation, unless nighttime security is more important than a functioning doorbell. The V-Bell 1 for Morenti has been my first video doorbell that I've tested. And I can see their appeal in covering both security and function all in one single unit. At its current retail price of just under $100 or around £89, I think it's a little bit of a bargain for what you get with this camera. The fact that it can work with multiple online assistants and you're not locked down with particular like Amazon, for example, if you were to have their Ring doorbell. There's a three month free trial, unlike Ring's 30 day. However, you also don't have to rely on cloud storage by installing a local storage option such as an SD card. And I've seen on Amazon that they also now bundle a 32 gig card, so you don't necessarily have to supply one yourself. There's also the added benefit of motion detection and its many settings that are available, as well as online scheduling to turn off the device should you want a little bit of privacy. And all of this while looking great at doing it too. So if you're looking for a smart video doorbell that offers more than the more obvious pricier options that are out there, then I would take a look at the V-Bell 1 for Morenti. All right, thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. If it has, please leave us a like down below and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the V-Bell 1 for Morenti. You can check out all my other smart tech reviews up in this playlist up here. Hit that subscribe button down below to catch all my future content and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.